Hello community! Today we are talking about Sentence Transformers, we are talking about Esbert, we are talking about... We are loading PyTorch, our Sentence Transformers, and we have a look at the version of PyTorch that you have for information, then we are talking about training datasets. So what are training datasets, why I need it, and how we download it, and how we use it, and how we do our own training dataset. Now, let's start first. We have here an official example about the NLI task, and we train a cross encoder. So what we do is, what is the most simple part? We import our dependencies, whatever, you can see this here. We have some debugging code or some logging code, and then here we go. We download a training data set because there is a beautiful training data set. This is all NLI or SNLI or simply NLI. And we will have a look at this training data set. What is it? What can we do with it? Let's just run this. As you can see, it is already in SBIRT, oops, SBIRT.net under data set. We have there a, a tab separated file, a, chip, a, a zip file. So, and then we have three labels. We have a label contradiction and tail main neutral. More about this in a second. And what we do is we simply open the zip file. We have a reader. Remember, we have a dict reader. So it's not a panda, a read CSV. And the dict reader creates a dictionary object for each row in the CSV file and maps each row value to the column name as the key. And then the key and the value, remember key value pairs, dictionary, are stored as a string. And this is exactly what we want. So let's have a look at what we get. We have a label, you remember our three labels here, contradiction, entailment, and neutral. And then we have, as always when we train machine learning models, we have here a training data set and everything else is a development or evaluation data set. And the way we have it is we just read in some input examples. We read a sentence one, we read a sentence two, and then we have a label. You say, well, that, that's, that's nice and funny, but let's have a look what is a training data set. Let's have a look at this in detail. So I just read it now as a Panda data frame, just for demonstration purposes, that you see how our training data set looks like. So here we are. We have a split in training and evaluation. We have here where this data set comes from. This is the Stanford NLI file name, beautiful. And then we have here the most important part of a training data set for fine tuning a bird or export or whatever. Here we have a cross encoder training. We have a sentence one and a sentence two and a label. And now what you notice is here sentence one, we have three times the same sentence but with a different label. From our three labels, we have neutral, contradiction, and entailment. And then we have a sentence two, and this sentence two seems a little bit of strange. And then we have another three times the same sentence. And again, we have neutral, entailment, and contradiction. And this goes on and on and on. And so I thought, hey, great. So when I want to do my own personal training data set, I will follow the same structure. But this was a mistake. Let me tell you why. There is this beautiful hugging face page, you know, where you have all the data sets. And then we have a look now at the data set SNLI. And as you can see here, it is really used for fine tuning in a lot of models. And the first model is a model we are interested in, cross encoder, NLI, and a distilled Roberta model. So let's have a look at what is the information about this. And they tell us that this corpus is a collection of 570,000 human written English sentence pairs manually. So there were people sitting down labeled for some balanced classification with the labels entailment, contradiction, and neutral, our three labels, supporting the task of natural language inference, NLI. So you say, great. So you mean some people sit down for 570,000 human written English sentence pairs and manually labeled those sentences? Yes, this is exactly what happened. This is how this data set came into being, if you want. 
We have a training data set from 550,000, we have a validation set of 100,000, and a test data set of 100,000. So, and I started to read a little bit more how this was done. And what you have to understand that the corpus, the text was developed, copied between 2014 and 2015. So you have to understand where the original data set comes from at which time frame and where it was taken. And where it was taken is easy. It was a Flickr corpus and a visual genome corpus. And what they did, and this is the, the really interesting part. Let me have a look. Oh, wait, I'll show you in another paper. What they did is they hired people. They hired a lot of people. They hired about 2,500 people. And those 2,500 people were paid between six and eight dollars an hour to do this manual job. Of course, they used Amazon Mechanical Turk for the data collection. So 2,500 people were given this task. At first, it was a photo. And then they told you, we will not show you the photo, but we have a sentence for you. And then you had the task to write three sentences to this anchor sentence. So the first one is write one alternative sentence, a caption to this picture, that is definitely a true description. This is what we call the entailment label. You have a true. Another sentence that describes the same topic that is in the first sentence. Then you had an alternative caption that is definitely false. And I give them an example and say, okay, you just write any sentence on this topic that is false. Logically descriptive false. And then comes the really, really interesting part and what I struggle the most of, because then they tell you, and now you write a third sentence that might be a true description of the photo. And they do, do not show you the photo. They just give you one sentence. And you think, yeah, of course, you just write something that might be true. But believe me, this, this is really a hard part. Because what I did, I sit down and I tried to do this. And I wanted to have a very specific topic, high energy physics, and maybe later about this topic in another video. And I sit down and I try to write for 100 sentences that I excerpted from a PhD in particle physics, high energy physics from CERN. And I try to come up with 100 sentences per day for 10 days. And I wanted to have 1000 sentences. And I tried to write a sentence in high energy physics that might be true. And I can tell you, uh, uh, after two weeks, I stopped. I did not have my 1000 sentences. So, of course, you need 2500 workers. And if you think that this was a short term thing, no. Let me show you who paid for this. Because you have to know where this data set comes from. Acknowledgement. Here we go. The support from a Google Faculty Research Award. A gift from Bloomberg. Then we have a Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA. Then we have under an Air Force Research Laboratory contract. Then we have another grant from the National Science Foundation. And we have the Department of the Navy, Office of Naval Research. So you can say, heaven's sake. So a lot of people were interested in training an artificial intelligence system, and they had no training data set. So they sit down to create this training data set, and they hired about 2,500 people to do the training for them. And if you're interested in, this is the paper here, the official paper for SNLI, from the Stanford Linguistic and the Stanford LLP group and the Stanford Computer Science group. What I want to show you, how they try to have a high quality standard because this was essential. Let's jump another time here. This is our first sentence. Remember, you are given a sentence and then you have to write down another sentence and this is the other sentence that is, for example, a contradiction. And they showed this to four other people. So you are a worker there and you say, okay, this is a sentence and I write down now the man is sleeping with a dot at the end or not a dot or whatever, free. 
And then your result, this is your personal result that you invented here. This result was shown to four other people. And if they decided, they read this sentence and then they read this sentence. And if they decided, okay, logically, the, con the content is a contradiction in itself. They also rated it C for contradiction. And then this was the gold standard. Because they have five times the same opinion about the contents of a sentence pair, sentence one and sentence two of the sentence pair, this is a contradiction. Of course, you had the case that you have a disagreement between the other four evaluators that evaluate your sentence one and your sentence two. And then they adopted more or less that if three out of five are good, then they accept the result. So if you're interested in the methodology, here 2,500 people sit down and you had four evaluators if somebody was writing down another sentence. So a huge undertaking, and this is why this data set is, I think, quite famous and really, really interesting. Yes, what else can we know? There is a discussion about the bias of this data set. This is always important, and Hugging Face has a beautiful description of this limitation. Curators currently is still part of the Stanford NLP group. And if you use this data set, this is the citing information that you have to publish because this is quite some work that has been done. So if you use this data set, please cite the authors and the publication of this data set. So this is just the data set itself. But you know what? Let's go back here. Um, if you have a look at this, and this was my first attempt that I write for each sentence, here a contradiction, an entailment, and a neutral sentence. And I fear after two weeks I had to stop. This is no way, because if I need 507,000 or 1 million sentences, and after two weeks I had less than 1,000 sentence pairs, there's no way I can do this manually. So there has to be a different method. But more about this later. Interestingly enough, if I would have scrolled down the data set, and now let's look down and this data set, you will see, again, we have one sentence, one, and this is repeated a lot of times here. You see here, one, two, three, four, six, six, 12 times. There are now for one sentence, suddenly 12 evaluations or whatever it is. And you have, of course, entailment, neutral, another neutral, two contradictions, one entailment, neutral. So you have a lot of other sentences, not just one sentence and three. So what I learned ah, in the data set, this single sentence that, that was given to them, a lot of people found different solutions. And now we come to the topic of lexical similarity in sentence one and sentence two. You see here we have in sentence one, three bikers. And I, at the beginning, was not sure, do we have now in the second sentence that I write down myself on my specific topic of high energy physics, do I have to include three bikers? Because you see here in the first sentence, you have three bikers. So I thought, wow, this is a narrowly focused with a lexical word similarity, a very high similarity on the words. And then I'm just allowed to alter the rest of the sentence. But if you look down, you see, okay, now suddenly it's not three bikers, it's just those bikers and some bikers. And here again, three bikers. And then three bicyclists are riding. So I noticed, okay, so what is the rule to set up a training data set for our SBIRT or BIRT model? How close does it have to be on the lexical wording? Not on the, on the general meaning, on the neural search, but on the lexical identity here. And as you can see here, for example, this sentence, three bikers stop in town and now for a contradiction they choose any other wording there's a very angry dog so you see there's no semantic similarity and no lexical similarity in the words so i learned okay at least in contradiction i'm free to write something down but then you have to think about the vocabulary because if you do uh, a bird model Given your, your training data set and where this thing has been trained on, of course, 
they learn the words in the corpus, in the text, in the, sent in, in the set of the sentences. So I decided not to go suddenly from high energy physics here to, I don't know, politics here. And I try to stay within the domain and in domain vocabulary use also for contradiction. So you see, I have made a lot of mistakes right at the beginning, and please do not do the same mistakes. Or if you choose for a particular reason, be aware that this is a, could be a problem. And as you can see here, a group of bikers in the street, then three bikers, and suddenly we had five bikers, and this was enough for a contradiction. So it is not easy at all to generate a training data set. Uh, it takes a lot of time, a lot of people, 2,500 people, and a lot of money to have a high quality data set. And now you understand if you look at SNOI for data sets, good data sets are worth a lot of money, are really, really important, especially if you have 570,000 human written uh, sentence pairs. And with a cross encoder, we are, of course, interested in sentence pairs. So, as you can see, Back to my example here, if we read in this uh, file that is provided for us, and the link is here, for example, here in S-Board, you have the uh, Stanford uh, dataset with an additional, not only S-NLI, but multi-NLI, so it is called all NLI, you get access to some beautiful training data sets where the machine learning algorithm learns the content you want to present to your system. And this is it. And you say, of course, okay, what other data sets do I have? You have a lot of data sets. Look at Hugging Face. It's a beautiful place. You have 6,000 data sets available for you. And you have now to choose which data set is best for the training of your S-BIRD model or your BIRD model. Now, there are task specifics, for example, language modeling or named entity recognition, sentiment classification, multi-class classification. Let's go here. And then let's say we're only interested in English. Let's focus more and say monolingual. So suddenly we only have 38 data sets. And then for the yeah, Phil Mask, this, yeah, forget about this for the moment. So we have 38 data sets. And then you check out what are those data sets. Not most downloads, recently updated, yeah. And you see people do upload their own data set that they train their system on, and they are so nice and gracious and provide their data set. They invested a lot of work and they provide it on Hugging Face. 